One of the, uh, one of the things which has been heard, or one of the people who's been heard about literally around the world, and somebody whose life and conversion and impact has changed, I can't tell you how many people's lives, but especially men's lives, is Brian Hill. We're honored to have uh, with us tonight um, Angela and Andrew and Allie and Vincent. I'm going to invite them up with uh, Mary Delpup. Go ahead and take your places up here. As, as they're doing so, I just want to say a couple of things quickly. I, I've gotten emails from people in other countries, in other states, um, around the state of Michigan, more or less all asking, who was this guy? Because they've heard about what happened here with men's ministry. Um, maybe they somehow were present at the funeral. Maybe they heard words that were said at the funeral. Maybe they saw this image, which if you look back here, this was a photograph of um, an event, if you will, which happened during Brian's funeral. Brian's uh, one-year anniversary was this past Saturday. So we're here t tonight to talk about God's faithfulness, and we're here to talk about storms, and we're here to talk about courage, and walking on water, and certainly one of the people who's demonstrated all of those things, walking on water, God's faithfulness, courage, um, is Angela and uh, her lovely children. Some of you know uh, the hills well. Some of you don't. Um, for those of you who don't, a Angela is from here, huh? So she's been a member since 1970. So she's OLGC through and through, huh? with the exception of a set of years where her and Brian lived out of the state. So this is not only her family, but this is her family, and this community in Plymouth is her family. And uh, we're honored to have you with us here tonight. We're honored to have all of you home, and we just want to tell you again how deeply we continue to pray for you and entrust you into God's hands. And I'm just going to ask Mary to lead us through some, uh, some questions to help us see what the Lord's been doing in the Hills' lives and, and how it is that an encounter with Jesus changed everything. Because if, if you only knew Brian at the end, then you might have thought Brian just always was like that. But nobody was always like that, <laughs> except for Mary. So there's a story here of an encounter, and, uh, and it's a great one to hear. So, guys. So first of all, let me start by saying it's, it's really a blessing and an honor to be up here with, with all of you. Um, Brian and Angela were the first people that I met when I started at Our Lady of Good Counsel back in 2007. I was on a journey with you guys, with your faith, with your relationship with the Lord. I came to know just a wonderful couple. I came to know a beautiful woman, both inside and out, and three absolutely beautiful children that God has truly graced you and Brian with. So I just want to thank you for coming here this evening and giving us this opportunity to hear about this journey you've been on. So I want to start out by asking Angela, I know that you and your family have been really through some difficult times, weathered some turbulences in your life, and one of the first ones was with Andre. So could you share with all of us what transpired during that time, and where were you and Brian in your relationship with God? So um, in 2005, our daughter, Andre, um, was put on the heart transplant list. But honestly, th that was a big storm in our life. But prior to that storm, there had been lots of other little storms. Andre um, was born with the same muscle disorder that Brian had. So we had lots of back surgeries. I had a miscarriage at 16 weeks. There's, so there were a lot of other storms before that. But this heart transplant um, was a big storm for us. And just to give you a little bit of background, of where Brian and I were, um, we were check the box Catholics. And I wouldn't have said that at that time, but as I look back on it, I know that. I think when you're a check the box Catholic, you don't call yourself a check the box Catholic. But when I look back on that, that's where we were. Um, we didn't really have a serious prayer life. Um, 
really no relationship um, with Jesus. And even though we had these other storms, I know there were times that we prayed, but it was a very one-sided relationship. So when Andrew um, needed to go on the heart transplant list, I remember walking in downtown Plymouth um, near the school because we lived there at the time, around there at the time. And Brian said to me, so are you okay with all this? Are you okay with our daughter being put on the heart transplant list? Because, you know, she could die. And if we um, don't do anything, maybe she's going to live longer. And I said to him, I said, no, I'm okay with this. Um, and I've given our daughter over to God. And only the way Brian could do this, he stopped dead in his tracks, and he looked at me and said, what? You're giving our daughter over to God like I had just announced I was giving her over to an alien or some stranger because that Jesus was a stranger in our life. And I said, yes. And honestly, for me, because of all the past storms in our life, it was out of pure desperation. I like could not do this anymore on my own. And I think it was the first time for me that I considered surrendering to God. And I have a hard time with surrendering still to this day. Um, and it was the first time that I contemplated having a serious prayer life. So it's obvious from Brian's response to you that what, you know, you're turning our daughter over to God, that God must not have been a part of your life, either as individuals or as a married couple. I think it's pretty safe for me to assume that you probably weren't praying together as a family. Mm -hmm. But I also have become very close with you, particularly before Brian's passing. I know that changed. So how did that change? And over what period of time? So I think it was baby steps. Um, going through that heart transplant with this parish community and the school community, Brian and I were overwhelmed with the love and the support and the prayers of this community. Um, honestly, the way we felt, we felt like we had no idea why we were worthy of this kind of love. Um, and so I think because of that experience, two things happened for us. Um, the people that were praying for us, we realized they probably have a relationship with Jesus. <laughs> um, and so we sort of started to have a desire to have a relationship with Jesus, but we didn't know what that was supposed to look like or how we were supposed to do that. And the other thing is, um, we just knew that this faith community was going to be a place that we were going to learn how to live. Um, so we started getting involved in the church more because we just wanted to give back to this community for all that God had done for us. Um, the blessings of Andrew's heart transplant. Um, we were extremely grateful to God for that. So we started getting involved in the parish. And we had been involved in other parishes before, but it was just because that's what you do. You check the box, you get involved in your other parish. It, it had no other significance to us. Um, but this time it was different. Um, some of the other things that happened is we knew we needed to spend more time with God. So I started attending daily mass. Brian started going to different Bible studies here um, in the church. So we were just, we had this desire, but we, we were searching still. Mm -hmm. So it was a long process. You know, that started in 2005. We had a lot of challenges along the way because when you decide you want to give your life to God, that means everything. And I think we still wanted to compartmentalize our life. We were, we were the big party couple, Brian and I. Um, so there was things that we had to give up. And so there was challenges along the ways. There were a lot of different um, conversions along the way up until, honestly, the day he got diagnosed, really. So let's kind of go to that point in your life. So you weather one huge storm with Andrew's heart transplant. You talk about, and I know we've shared a lot of the challenges that we ha you've had in your life. And then you get hit with this another huge storm. And Brian is diagnosed with cancer. Brian was very active 
in the parish community. It was part of stewardship and finance. And I remember after starting here, after a short period of time, him and Tom Baston came. They were two of the first men I met. And they wanted to talk about starting men's prayer breakfast. And um, just filled with such energy and desire mm -hmm. to serve the Lord. And then I came to know you so well. I don't think there has been a ministry you have not been involved mm -hmm. in, in some way, shape, or form. So that wanting to give back, even you even worked in religious ed for a year. Mm -hmm. So can you tell us, I know you've just celebrated the year anniversary of Brian's passing on Saturday. So can you tell us what this last year, how God has been present to you and certainly to, to your children over this period of time? Yeah, so I think, um, you know, obviously when Brian, well, not maybe not obviously, but Brian was diagnosed, we were in a different place in our faith life than we were when Andrew was going through her heart transplant. Um, so we were still at a point where we were overwhelmed with this parish community, um, the love and the support, the generosity. Um, it, it was amazing for us. Um, but during that time, and even after Brian passed, um, we felt Brian's presence everywhere in this parish because he was so involved. And as joyful as that may seem that it should be for us, it was actually painful for our family um, because it was a reminder that we were not together as a family anymore. Um, but, you know, God is faithful. And after Brian passed away, um, I received a lot of emails, letters, cards, had conversations with people that told me how Brian um, had impacted their life, kind of like what Father John had talked about. And he was willing to share our struggles, his struggles, um, with other men on a one-on-one -on -one basis. I think not only to um, help them, but to help himself. And a lot of this I had no idea about. Um, I had people come up to me at the funeral that I didn't even know that would tell me things like that. And so I think this last year I've learned a lot of things. I've definitely learned that I'm not in control, we're not in control, but um, I learned that God wants us to share our struggles with the body of Christ um, so that we can be a witness to the hope um, and that God remains faithful through every trial and suffering. Um, I'm sitting up here scared to death. <laughs> um, but I feel like that's really what um, God has put on my heart that we, we need each other. Um, we come together every Sunday as a parish community to be in communion with Jesus. But you know what? We come here to be in communion with each other, and we need to support each other. And this parish has always been my family. I can't imagine it never not being my family. Um, but in this past year, that has become even more clear um, to me. And, you know, Brian and I did jump out of the boat and did get involved. Um, and I think if we hadn't done that, we wouldn't, would not have um, had the encounter with Jesus um, if we had not done that. Wonderful. Great witness. Great witness to all of us. We do want to give Andrea the microphone and... If I can, Andrea, I would just like to ask you, we've heard your mom share about the support of this faith community, and maybe on behalf of, of Ali and Vincent, Vincent, tell us how you have felt the support of the people from Our Lady of Good Counsel of the school and that, and what it's meant to you. Well, I remember when I had my transplant, um, 
everyone praying for me at school, in the community, in the parish. Um, I was nine, so there's lots of things that I don't remember, but I do remember uh, the Caring Bridge site that was set up, and my mom and her friends would read to me all the letters uh, that people were writing, um, some of them from this parish that I knew, some I didn't know, and that was just really cool to um, hear that all these people were praying um, and coming together to think about me in that time, and coming home from the hospital, uh, <laughs> the street was lined with news cameras and then people from the community, from the parish. Um, so that was really a, a really cool experience um, to just see the love that this parish gives to anybody who's in need. Um, and that was really awesome. Also, for years after that, the parish office would send me letters, like little cards, just saying, we're thinking about you and still praying for you and hoping that you're doing well and uh, that life is, is great. And that was really um, a nice little reminder um, of the love that this parish has for its members. Also with my dad, every day we had people over praying with him, sitting with him, talking with him. Uh, we made a prayer blanket. We said the rosary as we tied uh, the blankets, which was really cool because I'd never experienced that before. Um, and so there's just a lot of support. And it's, it's good because in times of struggle, you need to have that support, um, even if you don't want it at times, but it's good to know that it's there. And this parish does a really good job at making sure their community knows that they're not alone. Um, we know that God is always with us, but sometimes we need that extra reminder that there's somebody um, just right around the corner if we need food or prayers. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you so much, Andre. Um, I just got a sense of how Brian right now, how your dad is just looking down upon all of you and just so proud. So thank you for, for your witness here this evening. So Angela, before we conclude, any final thoughts you might want to share with any words of wisdom for people before you leave here this evening? I don't know if they're words of wisdom, but it is a story. Um, of course, Jesus had words of wisdom. He said that, um, love one another as I have loved you. And I look at this crucifix a lot these days. And sometimes I look at that crucifix and I'm in awe that God did that for us. And that he loved us that much. But sometimes I look at that crucifix and I walk by it like it's no big deal. And I don't want to live my life like it's no big deal. In January of 2015, Brian and I attended our last funeral together as a married couple. And it was here for one of our sisters in Christ, um, Tony. And I remember after that funeral, he said to me, he said, you know, we come to these funerals and I want when I leave these funerals, I want to live for him. And he was talking about Jesus, obviously. <laughs> and he said, then a couple days go by, and things go back to the same. He said, this time, I want things to be different. He literally grabbed my hand, dragged me out to the grotto, and we prayed together. On that day, Mary, <laughs> the Holy Spirit was there. Things were different. When Brian passed, I had written um, some things from his prayer journal in his, in his program. But one of the first things I said actually came from that day, and I said, walk out of my funeral different than when you came in. Stare at the crucifix and decide you will live for him. We are not in control at all. Everything we have is a gift from God. 
our time, our talent, our treasure. Brian was really urgent on that day out at the grotto, different than I'd ever seen him before. And two months later, he was diagnosed with cancer. I know that God was preparing him for that moment. I just want my parish family, my family, to be urgent in their desire to know Jesus and to love Jesus. Amen. Because we know too well in this parish, especially in the last couple months, that God can take us at any moment. I want to be ready. And I want my parish family to be ready. Thank you, Angela, that's spoken as a sister in Christ who loves each and every one of us and I know desires to be in heaven with all of us someday, so thank you. Thank you for that. How about if we just all take this... about if we just all take a moment and I'll close with prayer and prayer of thanksgiving for certainly Brian or for Angela for the gift that Brian has been to this parish community and for all of the children as we pray in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit amen now oh, sweet Jesus just thank you for giving to us this evening this beautiful family and for us, showing to all of us how you witness your faithfulness to each and every one of us and to them. All of our hearts right now are just filled with thanksgiving and praise for your continued faithfulness. In the storms of our life, and goodness knows we weather many, you just ask us, to keep our eyes fixed on you and to hold tight to the cross. It just seems that most of the times we just try to outlast the storm instead of turning to you, the one who can calm it. May we never take the miracle of your grace and your generosity for granted. May we listen to Angela's words this, this evening and never just casually walk by that cross, that sign of love which you have given to us. Thank you for calling us through your word to put all of our trust in you. And we certainly thank you for this faith community at Our Lady of Good Counsel as we truly understand what it means to be a member of the body of Christ, that when one hurts, we all hurt. And when one rejoices, we all rejoice. Thank you for this evening, for the gift of Angela, for Andre, for Allie, for Vincent. We pray that you continue to give them strength, and wisdom, and continue to fill them with endless hope. We ask all of this in your sweet name, Jesus. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs>